Hello, and welcome to Final Show Films. I'm John, or since Taku, as you might know me on Twitter, the executive producer here, and I just want to thank you for watching. It really means a lot to us that people watch, listen to, and enjoy our shows. If you want to help us keep making these shows as fun and lively as they can be, please join your fellow fans in supporting us at our Patreon page at patreon.com slash fsfilms, or by subscribing to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash finalshowfilms. It really means a lot to us that the amount of you who do support us continue to do so, especially our $25 plus tier supporters on Patreon. Antitonic, Cat Water Flame, Samantha Bates, Maureen Monty, and Gravity Alexander. Every little bit helps, so thank you to all of our patrons and subs. Check us out on Twitter at Final Show Films and on our website at www.finalshowfilms.com for updates, go live notifications, and more. We love interacting with you, so feel free to tweet at us or email us at finalshowfilms at gmail.com. 
That being said, please relax and enjoy. We're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Everyone is Warlocks Conflux, <clears throat> the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign that we're running here on Final Show Films. And my name is Jack. I am your dungeon master and storyteller for this whole thing. And joining me today is Mara. Hi, I'm Mara, and I'm playing Aurelia Clementine Everns, human archaeologist and uh, great old one pack of the blade. And Nikki. Hi, everybody. I'm Nikki. I'm playing Diamond Guitar, the uh, Earth Genasi uh, Archfey Pact of the Blade Warlock. And John. I'm John. I'm playing Elishard Amasi, the Undying Pact of the Host Human Warder Warlock. And Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm in the wrong game. I thought I was a werewolf. And I am playing Zoe, the Hexblade Blade Stab Warlock. <laughs> and Jeremy. Hi, uh, I am Jeremy. I am in the correct game. Um, I just didn't get in there until the last second, as normal. Um, and I am playing <laughs> Korshana Savakri, Kalashtar Warlock, trying to murder their patrons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, William, who plays Wotan Saltspray, is unable to be with us this day, uh, as well as Cody, who might be joining later. Schedules are flexible sometimes, but we will proceed in their absence. Our last moments in conflux were spent in the bowels of a ruin where the Hawkshead Compact confronted the bearer of a singular mask the first of the fabled fey antiquities that they have been able to actually acquire. The adventure of that session started with information regarding a heist that their were-rat landlords have demanded, after which Diamond and Aurelia did some tinkering and experimentation, both to create a conveyance for Bubbles the Oozling and to determine if there was anything particularly odd or special about a lightning rod that had been purchased the day prior. It works. Yes, it does. The following dawn, however, saw the compact traveling to Underbow, where one of Cole's connections led to a half-intelligible pair of halfling woodsmen who guided the warlocks towards the rumors underneath the canopy of the Wanderwood. And now our eyes are drawn to the aftermath of the battle, as a desiccated undead has burned away, leaving a skeletal mask sitting in a pile of ashes on the stones. I have spared the dying on Zoe. All right. Reiterating Zoe. that again, just to make sure it's understood. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe has stabilized and is no longer in danger of expiring, although she is still unconscious. I Until go... the trap on that mask goes off. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going over to, because uh, I have a healer's kit, because <laughs> things happened. Um... <laughs> If Aurelia has a healer's kit, then I'm going to go investigate the remains of the lich. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I, I I remove uh, the sickening radius because that was defo still up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got <Whoops>. that. <laughs> go away. Yep. Uh, Aurelia can go ahead and make me a medicine, medicine check. Okay. Um... I'm trying to remember it because this has been a while since I looked at this. Uh, okay, it's got... Got it. That's what that means. Okay. Medicine check. Uh -huh. Do I have advantage from the... Nope. Or not? Okay. Just regular. 
Yeah, healers' kits are not as good as you think they are unless you're trying to not die. <laughs> they are both hey, not as good as you think natural you are 20. Natural you think. 20. You can tell that the healers' kit is not necessary. Okay. Uh, so it appears to be stable, but uh, stabilized. The function of a healer's kit is simply to make sure that you can stabilize. Got it. Okay. Doesn't have what would be needed to oh, okay. mechanically restore hit points or anything like. Yep, that. I see you that. You need now. a feat to get it to do that. Yes, cool. yes, you do. Cool, it's cool, a great cool. feat. It's a fantastic feat to have. It is one None of, of the best feats in the game, and I do not feel like it's overpowered in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the sickening radiance is dropped. And Elishard, you're going to investigate the pile of debris. Yeah, make sure nothing's going to get back up. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> unless he's turning into an ash elemental or something like that, you're pretty sure this guy is cinders and dust. I didn't go to a mage school. I don't know what the fuck these things <laughs> can do. <laughs> That's fair. But everything looks inert. <laughs> uh, anything left other than the mask? Uh, not from this individual specifically, no. And I pick the mask up. Okay. And inspect Caref it. Careful. Our um, last, our last expired member put on a weird suit that sucked the life out of the previous owner and then he ended up, you know. Well, I'm pretty Just be careful. this isn't a suit. Say holding yep. up the mask. <clears throat> Seems to be. <laughs> it's heavy. It looks like bone, but it's heavy. Do you want me to check it? Yeah. I'm just sort of in, I'm just sort of inspecting it to see if there's any obvious anything on it. <clears throat> looks like a sort of thing that you just stick on your face. You're not entirely <laughs> sure how it stays there's not like a strap, a strap or, anything. or right yeah mm -hmm. um just don't do a musical dance number after your face turns <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those like it conforms to your face it's, it's molded to your face perfectly so it just sits there it doesn't have need a strap thing mm, but it's... then you can't make facial expressions <laughs> Also, don't do like the whole operatic thing and like steal yourself down in an opera and like steal away a child or whatever he fucking does. I don't know. I'm concerned about the mask. That's all. <laughs> it's a full face mask, not a half mask. It's fine. Yes, but there's the a weird. There's, a, there's a weird inscription on the wall that just says "Angel of Music" and nobody <laughs> out there or when. <laughs> I love that musical. It's, uh, uh, see, that's good. the musical I hate. <laughs> oh, no. I it's enjoy the musical. I fucking despise the book. Try to read the book. Oh, no, oh, yeah, I'm never going to try to read the book. Much worse. I read the book. It's unreadable. <laughs> yeah. the, book is the book is bad. The musical is good. Which one did we get on to this? Phantom time? of the Opera. Uh, Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. Of the, opera. the book of Phantom of the Opera prefer... is Lord of the Rings level unreadable. Contro mm -hmm. controversial, controversial musical theater nerd uh, uh, opinion. I prefer the movie to the Broadway version because I prefer a Phantom with a deeper register because it contrasts better with the soprano voice than a fucking tenor voice does. Yep. Yep. No, I'm. I prefer I the movie because you can't fast forward a Broadway show. <laughs> <laughs> and theater nerds eventually come back. To <laughs> no, it's all D and D's, all theater nerds. It's all. All his. right. <laughs> Why am I surrounded in all aspects of my life by you theater people? <laughs> because we're everywhere. You love us. Because you we're love everywhere us. and we breed like flies. Aaron, you're our <laughs> stage manager. <laughs> No. I love you. No, I know what that entails. No. You're I mean, wearing a black long Yeah, I know. I was just going to say. <laughs> you, know, you are literally wearing stage gear. The level, of, the level of, oh my God, you people that you regularly have on your face. You're perfect. You're, You're absolutely perfect. We're kidding. We're I want to point out that it was really fucking cold today. Valid. It was. I'm actually no, wearing pants. Jeremy will validate right this. He lives in the it. same city. It absolutely was. No, there is a reason I did not go outside it's today. It's really cold down Other than the too. fact that, you know, I work from home. It's cold enough for me to wear Choke pants. holding this conversation back on the topic, though. <laughs> Don't apply too no. much pressure. We'll pass out and have brain damage. 
Uh, but yes, the 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 mask is in your hand. Uh, doesn't seem to be trapped. Doesn't seem to have any residual badness to it. It's it's got a level of energy that you can sense, though. This is a magical item. Absolutely. Is this one of this is? I've forgotten how much information Elishard has been given about the Fey Antiquities. I don't Not think he's much. been given a ton, but you were told you you are at least aware that you were out to get a magic mask today. Yeah. Is this one of the antiquities? I say holding it towards Aurelia. Yes. Um it was the Oh goodness, this is forever ago. I have no idea where my notes this is. Um yes, this was one of like seven, I think. Was that uh-huh. the number of them? Yep. Seven. Yeah, seven. I will take a look at it. Um, with do I roll the d4 for how many hours, or do you? I will. Okay. Sorry, I was reading no, about okay. being unconscious. Yep. Three hours, unless cool. you get healed before then. So I will use. Da, da, da. And I really would know exactly how many because I have keen mind now. So it was within the last month. <laughs> um, but I, as a player, do not. And then I use, yeah, do, uh, whatchamacallit, Eldritch Sight to just check on the mask, make sure there's not like a curse or something that is going to suck his face off or whatever with this mask. Um, okay. So you engage your Eldritch Sight. Yeah. Uh, Eldritch Sight tells you schools of magic. It doesn't tell you yep. anything about what the actual practical effects are going to be. Yes. So you have I'm... so you, you you have no way of telling whether or not this is a mm-hmm. cursed object. Okay. Um, but you can detect uh, levels of abjuration magic as well as enchantment. And a weird aspect of um i believe transmutation i want to say okay hmm most i know not not transmutation excuse me enchantment and a a weird enchantment Hmm. so abjuration and enchantment magic enchantment yep okay And I can't tell from looking at it, like, how it might attach or anything, like, just sort of... (sighs) We've had a couple of experiences with weird magic objects. I don't know if I would be able to compare this at all with the suit. That's probably what she's mostly thinking about, is, like, Uh is this going to potentially harm him like it... I was... You you know that Heaton had had levels of magic that gave him... (laughs) specific and detailed insight into the functioning of certain objects. You mm-hmm. yourself do not possess yep. that. You figure experimentation is probably your only reliable method. All right. AKA attune to it and you'll find out. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll hand it back. I, it, I, it's got abjuration so it's going to keep either things away from you or it might interfere i don't know how it's going to inter- interfere with you know what's inside you uh it might change how you look i would suggest that you maybe get away from the unconscious person here in case there are unintended side effects well i wasn't going to put it on here because we don't know what else might be around. Mm, we're in an area where there was a large, scary, pretty, pretty scary predator. This might be the safest place. Well, I I point at the I point at the the pile of ash. That was the large, scary predator. I'm pretty certain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will I will step away from Zoe, further away than I already was, and put the mask on. Okay. <laughs> so it'll take a does short rest it, does it to eat its my face immediately. No, it <laughs> yeah. just sort of adheres to an extent, uh, especially along the cheekbones and the forehead area. 
You feel like your mouth is still free to move. It's not going to inhibit your ability to speak or anything like that. Does the, Are you dead yet? Does the, I call. I sort of open my mouth and close it. Does the jaw of the mask open with my mouth? It doesn't, no. Okay. Uh. That would have been cool, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dead yet? No. Well, that's a complicated question to ask me. <laughs> All right. Yes, but no not more. anymore. Makes <laughs> no, notes no, no, no on... more dead than I was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Makes notes on paper. <laughs> I not not more dead now than I was before I put it on. I think it has to take a while to like adjust to me because right now it's not doing anything. Protection. <laughs> I just sort of like uh, look to the side as if I'm looking at somebody else, and. <laughs> Mentally, <laughs> is that what this does? Yes. Look back out, or turn my head back. So the guy inside me th- says it's protective. All right. And John, the visage sepulchral is in your journal. Uh, you can modify your character sheet based on the item description as needed. Just to confirm, would this also apply to my uh, my? Uh, you'll the, still get the, the uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll get all the mechanical benefits while in your symbiote form as well. Nice. So my Nightwalker AC is now twenty one. Yes, it is. Or it will be when I tune to it. Uh-huh. Do we want to wait here for Zoe to wake up, or do we want to carry uh, carry her out? Well, we could rest so that we all are at least back up to fighting capacity. I'm. I didn't get injured, or no, I did get injured. Uh, <laughs> I'm injured. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I wasn't injured. Nobody attacked me. <clears throat> and I'm down a spell slot, so. I'm down all my spell slots. All I right. hurt. <clears throat> uh, Jack, question. Let's rest. While everybody's taking a short rest, could I attune to this mask without taking a short rest myself? Um, no, you would need the intervening time to sort of be able to focus in on, okay, okay. yeah, so on, on my, the item. I will lose my temporary hit points. Yes, you will. Oh, no. It's okay, because I get my spells back. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh wait, God. Do temporary hit points go away on a short rest or a long rest? Uh, short rest, I believe. Mm-hmm. Let me check. All right. Is anybody not taking a short rest? I would like to for no reason whatsoever. Oh, no. Actually, temporary hit points last until you take a long rest. What was that, Jeremy? I would just like to 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 marathon run back and forth for no reason whatsoever. Okay. Sounds good. I'm not taking a short rest. I'm taking a unconscious. Okay. <laughs> Which doesn't restore my spell slots according to the rules as written. I think. Cora pulls a grog and just like paces around angrily. <laughs> no, no, that 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 would in, that that would would imply an uh, an unintentional thing. They are purposely like racing back and forth, like <laughs> touch touch. They're they're they're, they're doing um. Uh, what's the exercise? Yeah, no, they're not actually. I just think it's funny. <laughs> so I like the the because of how long Elishard's hair is, the mat the hair his hair basically covers the parts of the mask that like the ends of the mask where it ends. So it looks like just a demonic skull with hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sounds a, sounds about right. You look like you should be in bleach. Looks like looks like actually looks like uh, death from uh, from the Dark Siders games. <laughs> <laughs> okay so 
short rests are taken. You guys can spend hit dice as needed. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and I think Cody might be showing up soon. Yes. Ooh. Said he would be. He's logging in. Splendid. All right. <laughs> So you guys can all spend whatever hit dice you want. Um, I'll spend about an hour passes. I'll spend no hit dice. Okay. I will spend all my hit dice to heal nothing because I'm not hurt. All right. <laughs> Great. Um, but you guys have the rest of a ruin to look through or poke at if you want to. Poking. See if there's anything else down here, or you can just head back now that you've got what you need. Have a code. So having attuned to the mask, does it change at all? Like, does it feel different now? Um, you're you take the the intervening time, and with some very faint nudging from your symbiote as well, you begin to sort of understand the mechanics and and workings of this thing, learning to tap into the, the the concentrated necrotic essence of this this altered humanoid skull plate, more or less. Um, the feeling on it doesn't alter. It just sits there on your face, heavy, but not to the point where you feel any strain to your neck or anything like that. Just very, very dense and solid. Ooh. And Cody's here. Hey. We're taking a short rest post fight. So if Cole needs to spend any hit dice or doesn't want to take a short rest and decides to just fuck around, whatever. I only got hit the once. I might That's poke nice. around. <laughs> Actually, wait, no, I sp spent my spell slots. I'm short resting. <laughs> <laughs> spell slots. That's the spell key slots. for warlocks. Yep. Um, oh, I didn't update Rorik's hit points from the last time he leveled up. Ooh. Rorik levels with us? Oh, he gets yeah. to be even more of a more competent melee fighter than any of us. <laughs> he levels at a different rate, but yes. Uh, I'm, while I'm sitting there short resting, I'm, I'm going to sketch out the <laughs> whatever we are in, because this is a weird structure that we find ourselves in that maybe not a lot of people know about, so I'll, oh, okay. I'll make a map. Give me an investigation check, then. Okay. Nine. Nine. You're not feeling super happy with your drawing. Damn it. It's like, you know, this is, this, I don't know. Your hand feels like it's got a little tremor to it slightly, and you're like, this is, this is some first year student garbage. Yeah. I can do better than this. Damn it. Okay. So when we get done with the short rest, is Zoe still unconscious? Uh yes. It only about an hour has transpired. So oh, I will She's stable. She doesn't seem to be in any danger, but oh. whatever trauma it was is took a toll and it's taking her a while to come back from it. I look to the other person with muscles in the group and go. Do you want to carry her, or should I? Who are you talking to? <laughs> like... There's only one other person with muscles in this group, and it's Diamond. <laughs> to say. And Rorik, actually. Rorik is yeah. actively stronger than both of you put together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, he's why... not carrying a bucket of, of, of goo. Right? Yes. Yeah. I... So I will... No, I, I don't want to... I could carry everybody. Let me just carry everybody, please. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I be stronger to carry all of my friends? Because you didn't roll right in your uh, mixing potions roll. <laughs> <laughs> but I also didn't explode, so, you know. Right, which is also a good thing. It's a very mm -hmm. good thing. Also, yeah, no, I keep forgetting that Rorik is a part of the group because he doesn't have a portrait. 
<laughs> That's he, he's... what NPC companions are for, being immediately forgotten. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. Like horses. <laughs> They're not <laughs> real. <laughs> Rourke is very real. I would absolutely. <laughs> I feel like I think unlike what we're horses... talking about horses aren't real. <laughs> yes, <laughs> horses definitely aren't real. Horses are made up creatures. <laughs> you can apply that. Yes, we're playing D anD D. That's been established, anyways. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, yeah, uh, Rourke, would you mind carrying Zoe? All right. <clears throat> Thank you. You're the best. He sort of. <clears throat> goes over, makes sure there's no loose bits that are going to get left behind or dropped, and then just sort of picks her up like a football under his arm. <laughs> no, God. And she's draped over. She's so much taller than him. If he's picking her up like a football under his arm, then... Oh, yeah, the like, boots are dragging. Like, her legs and hands are just dragging wait, on the ground. Wait, 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 no. <laughs> Diamond Diamond does get some... She's like, wait, wait, wait. And she, she readjusts it so that... Like, I know you're only going to have one hand, but come on. Did, did she, like, you don't want her to bump Switches against something. We're kind of like, uh, yeah. Like, like. Fireman's carry. Kind of, fireman's, yeah, basically yeah, fireman's, fireman's carry. carry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh. So it's fairly muscular, but it's not that, like, broad. No. So that probably. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. It's more like, if he drags you, I'm scared of your head hitting a rock while you're unconscious. Yep. Yeah. That would be, <laughs> all right. That would be. Just, like, grab her, uh, her ankle and start I'd walking. get to come back as a different character <laughs> and watch a diamond feel bad. No! Please, God, no! Was Don't... the... Was this the same forest as the one where um, we had the rumors of the of the poison that... And, and like, the... This was one of the forests that was mentioned. Okay. Yeah, but we also concluded that that poison was pretty broadly oh, yeah, accessible yeah. to the criminal yeah. elements. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and the the place where we think the warlock hunting group maybe meets is a different forest, right? Uh, the place where you were told that they might meet. That was a pub a, in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Cool. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything else we needed to do before so we I left this area. Hear that? Yeah, West End yeah. Cruise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any other exit to this room other than the one that we came in? Um, there is, as you're looking around, um, there is a single door off to, uh, if you're if you're facing like as you were walking in, it's off to the right hand side. Seems to be in marginally good repair. Before we head out, let's just make sure there's nothing that's gonna jump out behind us as we turn around. And I'm gonna oh. head over towards that door. Okay. And cool. since, too. since everything that we fought in here thus far has been undead, I'll lead the way. They have difficulties attacking me. Go ahead and give me an investigation check as you get up to the door, then. Twenty. Twenty. You investigate it, make sure that they're, you know, as as someone who investigates areas frequented by criminals on a regular basis, the idea of a trapped door is quite high on your list of priorities <laughs> when you're engaging with a well, new spot. <laughs> as I'm, like, going over the thing, just, like, checking for, like, poison darts and traps, just, like, casually muttering off to the side, yeah, no, that's how Johnson died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you find no aggressive hazards to the door. Put your hand on the latch there, and it is icy cold. Colder than you would think, given the ambient temperature in this room. For, uh, yes. The, <laughs> the, the, the demon that you want to kill is ice-oriented, right? Correct. Cool. I open the door. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> you push the door open. Was that really necessary? The pun wasn't intended. Inside are upwards of a dozen corpses in this small side room. Mm, it's a fridge. The the. The dirt floor, because this one has mostly soil, uh, the, the flagstones have either been 
destroyed or lost or broken up and pulled elsewhere. Um, there are some drag marks where you can see places that corpses used to be, but were apparently removed. All of them in various levels of decay. But there's definitely a source of cold somewhere in this room. You can't see it currently, and you're guessing it's probably either behind or underneath the pile of bodies, most of whom are still uh, clothed. Some of them are actually wearing backpacks or, or satchels of things. So, over, over my shoulder, corpse fridge, uh, really cold, Some, like unnaturally so. And I'm going to move in towards the corpse. That's why I asked. I call from inside yeah. the room. I, 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 I imagined. Um, I will head in. Okay. You find much the, the scene as it was described, Cora. Mm. Um, probably about 10 to 12 bodies. Most of them humanoid. Um, there's a couple animals in there. Yeah. Uh, everything's still, like, no, nothing's been tossed in a sense other than just tossed into the room uh doesn't look like any of their possessions or or clothing has been disturbed all that much i'm not but, but there's definitely a cold source in here i'm not going through any of their things but i am fairly unceremoniously pulling bodies off the pile to f to dig towards whatever that source feels like it might be okay uh, give me an athletics roll, hmm, just to see how long it takes you. Hmm. I'm going to go over to look in the door. Okay. Not going in the room, but... 23. Couple minutes, and you uncover the source, or what appears to be the origin of the frigid temperatures in here. And Cora, you can see everything that's being done as well. Mm -hmm. There's a rectangular object, a box. Hmm probably about eight, nine inches long, about four inches tall, five or six wide. It's made of metal, very spiky and sharp, seemingly. Has a, has a pretty horrific sort of architectural appearance to it. And there's just a faint mist rolling off this thing. So I didn't go to a magic school but can I make an arcana or religion roll to recognize a phylactery? <laughs> uh, make a religion roll, actually. Eight. Probably not. <laughs> you have, It's a cold, creepy-looking box. Can mm -hmm. I... I would like to make an arcana roll to see if there is any relevance to... Okay. People of interest. Well, in that case, that would be in a religion role since it's demonic in nature. Mm -hmm. um, but given your God, yeah, back, this... but given your background and everything, I'll give you advantage on this one. Okay. I sort of. Well, of Am I within the thirty foot range for um, uh, detect magic? I will take what that. I'm doing. I don't. I don't touch it, but I do sort of like frame it with my feet and look at Cora and wait to see if there's any information forthcoming. Uh, with the 21, Cora, um, definitely demonic in nature, especially even just from the, the appearance and the various composition of it. Okay. Um, you broke 20. I'll say you have heard of an infernal puzzle box before. Oh, oh no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Don't solve this puzzle box. Not unless you really like chains and barbs and, and people with S and M gear. <laughs> but it's a it's a container, um, generally made of infernal iron, mm -hmm. uh, and frequently used to safeguard contracts that are generated between demons and devils and mortals, um, and. You, they once something is put inside, all of that. The only way to open it is through mundane means. You can't force it open through magic. Uh, you would have to solve it uh, to figure out the steps. 
in order to figure out what is God actually damn inside. it, Jack. What We're did just... I just go off on two days ago? <laughs> We're just going to leave this here. We're going to leave this plot point alone. <laughs> just never talk about it again. Would Aurelia be able to tell anything about it? Um, Aurelia stepping in. Yeah. Um, you can see... The box itself is mostly abjuration. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other sources of magic in the room besides okay. the box. Okay. And but but there it outside the the outside layer of abjuration school magic. It's like a it's like a stained glass window with something bleeding out from within. Evocation significant evocation. Oh, that's some, interesting. Some some transmutative and and uh, enchantment magic on the interior as well. Some it, ho it it itself is a magical item, but whatever is inside it is far more powerful and intense. Mm -mm. Mm. Nope. 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 <laughs> that is fascinating. <laughs> nope. Looking at Cora. Nope. Is it familiar no. or related? It's uh, probably. I don't. I'm not specifically familiar with this one, but it probably holds a contract. Do you want it? Considering yeah. it, how big is? They it? look really frustrated at them uh, for a moment, and they're like. I don't know how many. I don't imagine there are that many cold oriented demonic entities floating around Conflux. So I sincerely doubt this is coincidental. So should we leave it here or take it? I'm what going to take it, but what kind of contract is in there? What kind of contract do you think demons normally make? I have no idea. I mean, I imagine something on the list of you get something and I get your soul. Something to that effect. I will that, I will uh, reach down, pick it up. Packs and, of and power. I'm sure we are all familiar with those. <laughs> yep. I feel like probably inside it's just springtime for Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. I, I will pick it up and hand it towards Cora so that if it's trapped and explodes, it explodes on me first. I was going to say, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm watching curious to see if like, Elishard's hands turn into ice and fall off or something. <laughs> Make me a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. <laughs> See, Dixie. That's fine. I have You knew the, that was happening. I figured it was. That's why I picked it up before letting Cora pick it up. Oh, Cora wasn't picking it up. Cora was waiting for you to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. Nine. All right. You suffer. I have the most hit points at the moment, so it's like I might as well. Three take it. points of slashing damage as you just grab this very hazardously composed Hoso would not object. This. Basically, you're grabbing a handful of razor blades and just trying to hand it to somebody, more yeah. or less. <laughs> right. So it bites into your palm a little bit, and you can feel the blood sort of flow out slightly and freeze to the box. Oh, no. that's not good. My, my temporary my temporary hit points went from twenty two to nineteen. Right. I've seen uh, this horror. I movie feel before. like narratively <laughs> more significantly, you just bled on the demon box. Yeah. yeah. You're. It's no. It's no. Uh. It can, it, no. It's all that. It can it's fight. impressed on you. It can yeah, fight. It's imprinted. That's all imprinted. Knowledge. It can it fight with the. 
screw in this setting. It can fight with the Night Walker. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already have this buddy. No, I Alish, want this Alish, buddy. Alish Shard's like, people, so many people got claims on this this shambling Husk. cult of mine. Yeah. <laughs> if you get enough packs with enough exactly, demons, it's like as a, a warlock, card, like none ooh. of the, it's the Constantine theory. <laughs> no, no, no! You just I become Voltron, like but with a lot context, of packs. It absolutely the has to be the hope method, because <laughs> that is exactly what hope. Did. It is. The, it is the hope method, or, or uh, actually, as I prefer to call it, the equivalent of the 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 Mr. Burns disease. Uh, uh, right. method. <laughs> yes. Where there's so much wrong, they can't get through the door, so you're perfectly fine. <laughs> so, so like picking it up. Cutting myself, adjusting the way I hold it, holding out towards Cora. Be careful, it's really short. Lips off, Cora slips off their backpack <laughs> and just opens it up <laughs> for you to put it inside. Dumps it in. The backpack manages that... to not be. <laughs> the backpack just goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we bought brought bubbles in a backpack. Yeah. We could put that. <laughs> in a room and then put a bunch of food in that room. <laughs> I'm glad you are thinking of good commercial applications for this. Yes. It's a demonic contract for a refrigerator. The problem is all that food would then be demonically tainted. Somebody sold their soul for an ice box. <laughs> Look. I mean, but does Bubbles care if the food is tainted? Well, Bubbles not yeah, like me anymore. I, I know we don't have food. that much in the way of electricity, but I assume we have like ice block type. Yeah, you can. You we'll, can get you can get sawdust and ice blocks and shit. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the more important question is: Will Bubbles then become the servant of a demon? No, he's my servant. I love him more. <laughs> I'll fight a demon for my sweet child. <laughs> oh, Bubbles. Aurelia. Yes. You're watching all of this happen. Yep. There are, best you can tell, three other weaker nexuses of magical energy in this room. All right. Let's go through them all. This isn't yes, bad please. at all. I mean, if, We're if, not if, in if horror movie. Just previous adventures, magical if, items. If There's points, nothing wrong. If Aurelia it's points just... them out, I will go toss more corpses off of them until I find a thing. There's something. Yeah, I will... Yeah, if I can tell where they're coming from or you've what they got, might be. You've got rough rough guesses. Um, you can there's, at least tell which corpse or which bag it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's more magical items here. That's not like that box, but uh, right. I will point out. Yeah, that's fine. They are there and there. I will, I will so you start. You objects. start. Uh, go ahead and give me an investigation with advantage. I'm gonna be the creepy person and ask uh, no. how in the these bodies are partially decayed. How you know what? I'm gonna use my inspiration to add. To okay, that. <laughs> there you go. Why not? There is a body trading <laughs> conflicts. How much could we get for each of these? <laughs> each of the each of these corpses you could probably sell for about twenty thirty gold. Okay. Um, Elishard, to... as you dig through, uh, including the inspiration, you find roughly, uh, you find some scattered coins and, and semi-precious gems, roughly equivalent to about 100 gold worth of total value, and three potions. Ooh! I want to do it again. <laughs> Can I identify these potions? Um, give me an arcana check, then. Six. Uh, yep, these are definitely magic jars of liquid that you're probably supposed to drink. Mm. So, money, potions, walk over towards Aurelia, hold them out. Thank you. How much gold was it? Was it was 120? Like 100 gold. 100 gold? Yeah, about 100. Of gold okay. and gems? Gold and gems mixed together, but yep. mechanically, yep. it's just gold. Yep. And three potions. Can I tell what kind of potions they might be? Would you like to make an arcana check? Yes, please. <clears throat> I'm good at arcana. 23. You're phenomenal right. at arcana. Um, you've got two standard potions of healing and one potion of climbing. Ooh. Of healing? Okay. I would well, like 
another like 39 of these just hoard on my person until the very end of the game. Thank you. <laughs> That's what Jack does. <laughs> Never needed him, but I had him in case. <laughs> and that was those three potions because every the three time magic. You... Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Never needed them. Five characters died over the course of the game, but they never needed the healing potions. <laughs> None of the characters died while I was there. <laughs> Go. Well, this one of these will be useful. Um, this one's climbing. Uh, these two are healing potions. I'm going to feed one to Zoe so that we don't have to carry her body through the forest and worry about dropping her on a rock probably wise thank you that's my that was my one concern is dropping her on a rock not that rorik would drop her because rorik is the rock you're in here you go diamond so uh, uh zoe you can roll 2d4 <laughs> plus two um you yeah, regain seven hit points I mean, my max isn't that high, so I'm actually doing pretty well now. <laughs> Percentage-wise, yeah. Thank um, you. Thank you, Nick. Now I am not able to imagine Dwayne Johnson as <laughs> Rorick. I, I will, I will but be... But shorter, so like the pebble. I will be... I <laughs> mean... I will be away from Zoe when they're feeding a potion, so the first thing Zoe doesn't see is the face of the lich that killed that knocked her, that knocked her no, out. No, she sees yeah, her beautiful girlfriend, her beautiful yeah. concerned girlfriend. <laughs> hey, beautiful, how are you doing? <laughs> you look Vince great. You you look great in the morning. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, stand up, stretch. Rorik sets you down. Thanks. Oh. Thank you, Rorik. <clears throat> Hey. Put press F. <laughs> What's the thing that like think you think the bus driver in Fortnite? <laughs> like, always think Rorik. Oh, I think press F is a different meme, but maybe it's the it's same. like pay respects. F is like pay respects. Yeah, yeah. Press F to pay respects is a meme based on uh, Call of Duty. Thing. Yep. Call of Duty. Right. Although it might still, it might still be F to thank the bus driver in Fortnite because that's the kind of thing they would do. Yeah. 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 Basically, the punchline is press F to get over your emotional guilt and then we can move on with the shooting. Pretty much. <laughs> so, to you guys have a baker's dozen of bodies, more or less. <laughs> yeah. So, I... Uh, did it really a voice the the how much money we could get for these bodies thing? Not quite yet. I okay, I cool. yeah. That, well, well the well the touching wonderful scene of <laughs> bringing Zoe <laughs> back to life <clears throat> happens. Bring me back. Bring me back. To... Anyway, uh, is there like a like <laughs> like like piece of like piece of cloth or sh or shirt or something on one of these corpses that is just like it's irredeemable and inconsequential if it maybe gets fed to an oozling. I mean, probably. Sweet. <laughs> the, <laughs> most of them are still wearing their clothes and their clothes are still mostly intact. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, take takes one off and just like feeds it to the oozling. Like, there you go. Can I tell who these people <laughs> might have been? I'm, I'm just randomly curious now. Like, are these, do these look like this is Those gonna go through the body's actual like stuff see what they've got okay um most of what you find is heavily spoiled rations or number of things that have been soaked with blood to the point where they're no longer usable um several of them seem to have kind of outdoorsman huntery type equipment to them uh, there aren't any actual weapons uh, the the closest you'll get is like a, a very small knife <clears throat> that's meant for food, not actually fighting or killing anything. Give it to um, the And sure. Bubbles can have a knife with his bone club. But your best guess would be that these are people who ran afoul of a creepy thing in a ruin, and the creepy thing in the ruin kept them and used them when he needed them. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. Um, Sounds fair. Nothing like I—I I, am assuming this is a long shot. Any 
symbols on armor or someone who might have a sigil either of like a guild or a house of some variety probably not um as far as that goes you find uh one corpse who is wearing uh a symbol of uh gond the god of craftsmanship industry that sort of thing yeah, around their neck. That's really the only sort of insignia or icon. Well, that's not particularly useful to me, so. Yeah, not really. We could sell the corpses, you know. Yeah. There I mean, it is. we could. Is it worth dragging them out of here? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, are you going to carry them? I don't mind carrying them. I'm just a little worried that either our guards could take a f- our guides could take offense, or if we're ambushed by any of the many, many things that dwell in this forest on the way out, we don't really want to be dragged down by bodies. But yeah, it could be a profit. I'm not saying no to that. Um, Jack, what's the general like social? norms around that does it depend on i'm assuming oh that's like, some back alley creepy ass shit oh, yeah. that you do not do in public uh-huh. yep okay <laughs> no probably not worth like it so you know you know the cultural norm so you know really business different. is normal and knives font basically yeah get your corpses here uh-huh yeah <laughs> hence ella shards you want to run into mill corpses or you want to locally sourced artisanal corpses <laughs> hence, mm. hence ella shards immediate response of yeah you could do that but i'm not carrying them <laughs> yeah also i'm not an expert on this but corpse blood makes for good poisons so we might not want to risk diseases can spread from the dead yes i right. am aware um, it's kind of cold in here, but I don't know how well preserved they necessarily would be based on that. They're pretty stiff. Mm. Yeah. They're Actually, if, if we're not bringing them back, um, I, I am assuming that a poisoner's kit comes with some, like, vials and stuff. Yeah. Could I make essentially lazy poison out of this sure uh go ahead if you're using the corpses as a resource um go ahead and give me a poisoner's kit roll using intelligence okay i have proficiency which sounds good yeah you'll your proficiency will be added in dc here is 15 depending on if you beat that or exceed it that will give you 20 okay um, so you get two doses of basically corpse poison, we'll call it. Okay. Um, it's good for one strike uh, from either a weapon or uh, from either a melee or a ranged weapon. Um, and it deals an extra 2d6 instant poison damage on hit. Uh, anyone Certain particularly phase. inclined to have some poison? It's not going to be useful for long, but I'll describe basically what I expect it'll do. There, there, there are people in this group that are good at at, at physical weapon fighting, and then there's me. So, <laughs> I I will pass, but I'm sure that others can find you for it. I mean, I can use them. I just I'd like to experiment. I... Yes. Okay. Hand okay. you some corpse poison. Um, One corpse poison. Hold One up the poison. other vial. Uh, hand it out to Rorik if he's interested. Rorik will look at it. Mm-hmm. That eight. Yeah. How long? Mm-hmm. It'll only last a single strike, but if you can make it count, it'll give you the bite of your weapon some extra. That's good. Yeah. Use what you've got. Well, anyone else have things they can do with corpses? Should we strip them for materials, or we should just head out? I mean, if they don't need their clothes, I could use it as oozling food. That's all. 
I don't want to take the clothes off right now. Currently, you notice that Bubbles has dissolved an entire boot and most of the foot inside it currently. No, Bubbles, no. (laughs) (laughs) Don't eat that. (laughs) Bad Bubbles. Like a dog with a... With a smile. All right, I'll, I'll start removing pieces of people from the things that people were wearing and being somewhat mindful of the fact that these are kind of poisonous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ooslings can eat them. Right. I will, I will tell you guys right now, he is immune to almost everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> except, necess- except perhaps, we don't know for sure, evil. <laughs> I mean... Oh, Bubbles is definitely not immune to evil. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will acquire some... I guess pet kibble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited. It'll keep him from when, eating the house. <laughs> I'm really excited for when, uh, as we're approaching the end game of, of of the of this chronicle, Bubbles is revealed to be one of the one of one of our patrons, having changed itself into an inanimate form just to follow around forever. <laughs> so Diamond's patron. No, no, not my even necessarily. Is too vain to want to. No, yeah, 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 you never do that. <laughs> it, cho- it, 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 it then chose diamond because why not? Why not? The last thing that anybody would suspect. I and imagine something happens between the... me and my fave, whatever, and the, the like, he leaves me, and I'm just like, I, I'm, I guess I'm not a warlike anymore. Bubbles is like, mother, you have cared for me for a very long time. <laughs> Take my power. <laughs> Yeah, so Bubbles is end boss confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I just, he's getting pet kit. I just had this. I just had this like Marvel style chronic panel in my head after Cora said, "I'm pretty sure not 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 immune to evil," of just the symbiote in Elishard like laughing, just like, <laughs> just, like, like evil damage doesn't exist in five E. Need that symbiote. <laughs> All right, so you guys head up. Mm-hmm. and out all right yeah you retrace your steps back to the surface um and as you step out fergus and cademan are there throwing bits of cheese back and forth and catching it in their mouths nice. they glance over cademan's so, the one who zeroes in on zo I said, you're looking at me that. Seems it was well similar. Wasps. You better sit there. You can say face each other. I caught like a couple words in that. He's getting I, better. I, <laughs> must be tired. I, I feel like I'm getting used. And to he hearing. starts pulling out what looks to be an herbal poultice of some sort. In oh, my uh, again. Sure. Mentally, to really, he's not getting better. You're just getting more tired. <laughs> so it that's, makes more sense. That's also a possibility. It's very true. I uh, go ahead and roll three d six. Zoe, nice. And that's how many hit points you get back. Slap. Oh yay! I think I might be at half health now. <laughs> yay! Yay! Look, I I don't have that many hit points in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a little over half. Yeah. Oh, nice. Fer- Fergus, while while his while his brother is tending to Zoe's injuries, looks over at Elishard. So is that's what you went in there looking for? Yep. <laughs> Look, right, intimidating. I like it. I like it too. I think it likes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, seems like we should be getting you back to the streets then, I suppose. We have a mutual appreciation yes. for one another. Thank you. <laughs> this, this is very important. Did we actually take the corpses with us? No. No. It does not seem no, to but good. I did I, grab and probably bag in something else. You've a you've got a you've got a it. you've got a decent level of smallpox blanket to yeah. feed uh <laughs> to feed bubbles. Yeah. It's fine. 
look, he's a possum. He'll eat everything and protect us from ticks and Lyme also, disease. Also, he's already made of acid and reg and would in the wild be eating corpses. I'm not too. Oh worried. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I don't. It's probably yeah. No, Bubbles is gonna be fine. He's already got some dead guy's skull floating around in his and in some get field. and some dead guy's femur, shin bone, toes, toes. <laughs> um. But they guide you back out uh, to the through the through the twisting web of trails until you get to their uh, cottage. At which point, uh, Fergus turns and says, "Well, believe that uh, concludes our contract. Then, so unless there's anything further, you'll be needing." Nope. Hopefully, okay. Woden passes over the remaining gold. Yeah, I I, ass I assume Woden would would. Yeah. Conc or I can. Yeah. I I think I paid the last one. Yeah, right. So I, yeah, did. Yeah. I paid the first half. Yeah, it was 17. 17, 17 and a half gold, right? Yeah, because yep. yep. thirty five was the full. Uh... Yep. yep, I do that. Thank you kindly, miss. And uh, if you ever need to get back into the woodlands, well, you know who to come to. We do. Fair play to you then. I think it's time for lunch. You as well. And you can already hear Cademan inside somewhere banging some cast iron together. Apparently, lunch was the first thing on his mind as well. Um, oh, are, um, are we being invited for lunch? No. No? no? Okay, never mind. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> awkward, awkward beeline away. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so... I, I'm stepping aside from the rest of the group for a moment. I want to step over towards uh, the the intelligible gnome or halfling. Are they halflings? Yeah, or no? uh, halflings. 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 Yep. The Fer Fergus is is almost back inside, but if you're trying to halfling. catch him before he leaves, you can yeah. do so. Um, just one more thing. I pull Hi. out twenty gold, and I hand it to him, and then I and then I follow that up with the piece of paper with the poster that I have. That has the symbol for the warlock hunters. Mm -hmm. If you find out anything, any activities of these people in the woods, if you would please send me a message, and I'll give him the inn that's near the Hawkshead House. Okay. Great. Well, I'll have a look around then. Thank you. There's a number of dark folk that stands at these areas, so. Uh... Just the symbol, though? They operate under that symbol and that creed. It's the one that says Death the Warlocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I hear anything, I'll keep you updated. I appreciate it. More gold for more information. That's what I'd like to hear. Well, best of luck. Uh, remember, it's third left, and that'll take you right back to the streets. Thanks. And then I'll leave. Okay. All right. And All right. I, 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 the player, can't remember the name of that inn, but it's the one that's the uh, near um, uh, near our near the Hawkshead House. Yes. Motley Brew. Oh, beer and yep. loathing. <laughs> uh, beer and loathing. I think. Yeah. Okay. What time oh, of the, day is it? Oh. Uh, right about now, it's just past noon. So we've got a decent amount of time left in the day. Do we want to? go after the um definitely magical potentially using a cloak dancer's web group first question before i give my vote on that at least elishard can you take that off i just need to know <laughs> the mask I, I reach up and take it off okay we okay and Good. underneath it, he no longer has skin. No, just mm. <laughs> Take off the mask. There's another mask underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Russian nesting dolls all the way down. Uh, good. For like half a second, because the symbiote was busy fixing something that was rotting. <laughs> Ew. It's yeah. the symbiote version of you just busting in on him in the bathroom. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be a good idea. Put the mask back on. Having more of these artifacts, it can't hurt our chances in this game. 
And we know that at least one other compact is after them. So the faster we get them, the better. And yes. we really need to go down to the undergrass, but we can't do that until Aurelia's friend stops doing paperwork and starts providing paperwork. Another Apparently few days. Weeks. Oh. A week. Yes, it takes a week. Yeah. The uh, the where rat heist is actually going to happen before the paperwork is done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, you've got time to praying that Cora doesn't murder us for that. Uh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you've got you've got time to head over to uh to tw- uh to Dancer's Court. Just for we can get most of the way there by boat, right? Because we took the boat here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just from what I've gleaned from this mask so far, I think the more of these we have, the greater our chances of success at any endeavor that we're going after is. All right. This mask is very useful in multiple venues for me. All right. Um, did I can't remember? Did did Cole and Diamond? I know there was uh, obfuscation about what happened when they went, but did they give any uh, like summary of what was the? Can you describe what it? What did you actually see it? Yes. When you went and looked. They yeah. told us about the things that happened before they went to go see it. They just didn't mention that okay. Ben went in later, I think. So yeah. the the show they, and stuff. Yeah, they definitely would uh, Diamond definitely would have disclosed that, yeah, no, that the lady was flying, like s- straight up flying. All right. And then just somehow we have to get into the tent and or get them aside somewhere. Or something, you know, to have the show turn today? into a bird. Um, yes. Yes. I, would it, Diamond and Cole have described the actual sort of layout of where they were doing their performance? The stage and the auditorium, but not the backstage. <laughs> yeah, okay. Not a, yeah. All, the, all that, that you guys. A building, there's a building behind it, not, not any tents. Oh, well, Cole did do. Uh, um, uh, ghostly visage, right? Uh, ghostly gaze. Just... Ghostly gaze. But does that tell you, does it give you a building layout or is that just you locate a thing? No, I, I can see through 30, I can see through anything within 30 feet of me. Yeah. But you can't, mm-hmm. but you can't tell what, like, you can't it's see, like, a building layout. Not really, no. 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 Okay. Not All unless right. it's a one room building. But you can, you... <laughs> There's less than 30 feet in any direction. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but you could, you could potentially say with Ghostly Visage, like, yeah, there's there's more rooms behind the stage. That doesn't give away what we did, but does let them know, like, there's more yeah. behind the stage. Yeah, there's yeah. the building. Right? <laughs> there's the building behind the stage. What's past that door? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> All right. Good. There's a lot of ways we could go about this. Uh, we... Uh, I see what... Jack... I have a feeling that I, I, as a player, know the answer to this, but I just want to confirm that Ellen Shard also knows the answer to this. There's probably not a lot of chance that I can throw around any amount of official power. Not well, definitely not in no, definitely court, not in dancers' yeah. court. But even if I was a dancers' court warder, I still wouldn't be able to throw around. Like, there's no way I could argue that you, you have to you have to hand over this thing to me because it's evidence in a thing. Da da da. No. Yeah. That's not how this works. If it's not really in no. a place, not on a person, and we can figure out exactly where it is. I have a spell that allows me to teleport three hundred feet. I can go to the location, grab the item get back within 12 seconds perfect or actually i can less if i can see an ally <laughs> so just, diamond the cold face are just like mm. i can provide so we need to figure out exactly mm-hmm. where it is if, um, yes. if because otherwise i can't teleport into walls i just have to know where they are if the stealthier people zoe and cole uh wanted to yeah. have an amount of time to look into it I could provide a particularly hefty distraction. <laughs> uh, not a, not, not even a violent one. Can I get an insight check? <laughs> Your friend seems worried about this. Go I'm ahead. wondering. Sure. About that. Roll your insights. That's concerning. 16. <laughs> <laughs> 11. Four. 
<laughs> oh. Ella Shard seems amused. No, I, don't know I, what he's thinking. I have no fucking oh, idea. Oh, sorry. I thought it was yeah. in front of me. I, that was an insight on Diamond. Okay. Oh, because I thought Diamond's you were doing it on reaction Ella Shard. to Cole and yeah. Um, Mine was to Ella Shard's, though. I could provide a discredit. Yeah, no, yeah. My insight was definitely <laughs> no. to Ella Shard's. Like, I can just for the do ones a distraction. That were, for the ones that were aimed at Ella Shard, Ella Shard seems incredibly amused at the thought that has entered oh, his brain. Oh, I cannot tell right now. I got a four. <laughs> Um, Diamond, go ahead and roll a deception to contest Zoe's. Whoops. Uh... <laughs> so I presumably know that that is making you uncomfortable, even if not exactly why. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, oh the, the talking about the cloak or Elishard? No, the... Okay, maybe the... Never mind. I, the dimension player door. was assuming oh, yeah. things were going on. The, like... Reaction to Cole and Zoe stealthing being a let's not. Yeah, no, de yeah, defo, defo. Diamond looks really concerned, both because uh, of things that haven't been disclosed yet, and also uh, if you're going by yourselves and she's not there, she is concerned because she loves you. Yep, cool. Um, uh, I can, yeah, <clears throat> I could, uh, as an example, make something, uh, well, here, it's best to show you. Uh, and I pull out a knife, and I'm just going to throw it at a tree. And then while it's in midair, I'm going to cast Jotun's Jest on it to make it gargantuan. Yep. <laughs> you could have laid it on the ground and made it big. You didn't have to throw it. Can you do that on a bullet? I can, oh, do, that. I can do that on anything that I can see. Well, let's move too quickly. Damn it. Okay. Anything so that I can see within 25 feet. definitely a good feet. distraction. Um, it doesn't have to be a knife. I say, I say pointing at the now gargantuan knife that is probably like split a tree in half. Um, yeah. It could be a stagecoach wheel. It could be a rock. It could be anything. It could be a tent. Also, it works in reverse. <laughs> Actually, hang on. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work in reverse. It only goes. I was up. gonna say, I don't think it, it only goes up. Works. Scratch that last line. But no. Mm -hmm. But I can. Now there's a I giant make, knife. I can make anything that I want, gargantuan, for a. It has minute. to be specifically a thing, though, not not uh, living creatures, though. Yeah, it has to be an but item. An if item. you did that to something like, um, something that was valuable. It could cause a distraction. It could also it could also turn to food. A giant loaf of bread, yeah. a gargantuan loaf of bread, would probably be quite distracting and confusing to oh, everyone yeah. around. I, I think a and, giant and, diamond would definitely not this diamond. Excuse me, mm. a gemstone diamond. Like just set it down to be like, <laughs> boom. I could very easily and, cause a giant diamond to crash into their stage, which would yeah. definitely draw their attention. And allow for sneaky people to get around the yeah, distraction. Yeah, that's it's that's a good nice. distraction. As you guys yeah. watch, the knife has now returned to normal size. Okay. <laughs> I think the key with us sneaking in is that Woden's MIA, we need, or I, we would probably need a pretty good idea of where it is. Because if it's on her, that's harder. Yeah. Because pickpocketing someone's cloak off of them is quite challenging. I go, the, and, I go and pick up the knife. She's right. The other concern uh, I have with doing a large distraction with bread or a diamond or whatever is that that is very visible magic that is going to draw the attention of things uh, that people that want to kill us. Colin Diamond, go ahead and give me an intelligence check. It's very visible magic, but it only lasts a minute. <laughs> We'd be able to get nope. out. <laughs> no. Oh, cool. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking of other things right now. <laughs> right. Diamond, Diamond you, do re you do specifically recall that they use the cloak as part of their costume wardrobe on stage, and you guys saw them immediately get out of costume as soon as they went backstage. You did notice that that was apparently- Yeah, no, their, I, I remember their that. mode. <laughs> no, no, I definitely remembered that. Cole was thinking Cole, about this- Cole has found a very interesting mushroom and he's trying to remember whether that one's edible or not. <laughs> I, I, I feel like Cole's thinking about how much food he could eat bef in a minute before it goes yeah. back to normal size. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
No, other things. <laughs> How much of a giant bagel could I eat? But as some planning is done in preparation, and we'll get back to it as needed once we return, we are going to take a quick break for a moment. We will be back in just a few minutes. Please stay tuned to these commercial messages. <laughs>
we're back. Welcome back. So, as the compact comes back to <clears throat> the sun-dappled lanes of Underbow, discussing quietly amongst themselves their plans to potentially head to Dancer's Court and see if, in a flush of triumph, possibly acquire a second Fey Antiquity today. Wotan will provide water transit as needed. Is there enough time between in uh, in the transit that I could get another short rest in and get that spell I just yeah. used back? Uh -huh. right. Yep. And I'll also let yeah. Zoe use... <laughs> use yeah, and Zoe can, Zo can nice. roll some um, some hit dice if, if, if she so chooses. If get a chance before we hit the boat itself, I am going to try and drag Diamond aside a bit. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay. Hey, what's up? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Just uh, Elishari talking about making a distraction and, you know, sneaking around is yeah. got me concerned. That's all. No, I just, I am pretty good at sneaking, but if, you if you're not good comfortable at with it, we can do something else. No, 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 no. no. I mean, like, honestly, because I can do the thing that makes it really good for people to be even more sneaky. Mm -hmm. So maybe, like, Maybe I could come with you instead. I mean, that would be all three fun. of us could go. Like, oh I no, no, I just look like I'm trying to get to alone people, time. But I guess <laughs> I can only teleport two people. I can teleport and one person, but like, <sighs> I can teleport. Okay, fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I. I don't know. Like, I am still thinking it's not the right plan if we don't know where the item is. It's fine. I just didn't want to make you uncomfortable. No, 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 you're fine. Wait here. <laughs> Devin runs over, grabs Cole, drags him over. What? Yeah. Yeah, no, like, just like. <laughs> <laughs> so. Cole, we. We need to tell Zoe that we know kind of where the cloak is. So we, okay. so we, we, um, we gotta, if we're gonna go on this mission, it would just, it would cut back on so much time and a lot of stress. Yeah. We may have scouted ahead <clears throat> uh, when we went to the show. So you mentioned when you were describing the show that they take it off after the show. You know where they keep it or where they might keep it? I think the wardrobe room is first door on the right. <laughs> yeah. When we get there, you can probably point it out to me. It's fine. But you just have to be really careful because there's a, they, they do not like people getting back there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's why my thought is as much as possible, get to the right place, teleport in there, teleport out, because I think you, I think I can go much further. I can go like blocks. You can, you can do that. I can only go however much dimension door allows me. Yeah. Like a hundred. Um, Less than that. Dimension door is the one that's yeah. Dimension oh, door is 500, 500 feet. feet so 500. If that's what you have. Yeah. Then oh, you can go yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Dimension. Yeah. My thought is, we dimension door in. We don't have to tell them we know exactly where. Just like best guess. Um. Since dimension door into that room. Grab it. <clears throat> get back out. Because otherwise, my plan was to get a disguise and in full view the minute that they're disrobing, try and grab it. Well, maybe what we could do, because you and I both can teleport two people, why don't one of us take Aurelia as well and the other one take Cole and I... the four of us get in there and Aurelia can look for it. Because that was right. the one thing. Right. A really has magic vision. Yes. Yeah. And that could that could cut down even more time. Yeah, that would have been real useful. Super so, useful. Really quickly, Jack. You. 
Is there a chandelier in that theater? Uh, it's a, it was an outdoor theater. <laughs> Can there be a chandelier for some reason? No. no. Not, a, not in Where an outdoor gonna... theater. No, a the question. Phantom of the Opera was there shit. either a top of the theater lighting rig or top of the theater curtain? Uh, no, it was it was an open amphitheater. Damn it! Yeah, nothing up above. That would have that would have that would have interfered to... with the whole like you know flying. Up. I wanted to Probably. drop a chandelier and start singing about how. <laughs> You're gonna have nope. to point of no return. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to wait for a fancy noble party for us. For... Another one. Who yeah, another one. Two. <laughs> or we no. just acquire a tiny model chandelier because it doesn't matter what size the original <laughs> item is. Throw it. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the yeah. chandelier. Yeah. I feel like we could probably find someone that can make that. Aurelia, quickly make us tiny model chandelier. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> that's in the conversation I'm in. Yes. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, So we want, we want to keep it quiet. So is it best to bring four people or few people as possible, few chances as possible for risk? Or are we more? Oh no, definitely few, as few people as possible. Okay. <laughs> like. So you and Aurelia could go or I and Aurelia could go and Aurelia can also, if we get her approval, potentially be emergency message and if things go bad and we can't get out for some reason you could come in after us yeah i i i've seen the door that cole mentioned because i did the reconnaissance so so you probably have there. the best approximation for his mansion dooring then mm -hmm. okay yeah i think that makes sense um yeah Diamond's been the closest. We've got a good guess. Teleport in, grab the item, teleport out with Aurelia's help because she's got magical eyes. Magic eyes. And do you and Cole maybe want to do just like uh, outside scout and to make sure if something looks mm -hmm. dangerous that we can get out quickly? Yeah. I'm inclined if you're going in to conserve my magic in case we need to teleport in after you, but mm. Um, mm. yeah, no, we'll <coughs> yeah, no, well, me and really we'll, we'll get in there. Um, I would feel comfortable knowing that there's someone like near the stage or in the like seating area that's keeping an eye out. Cole and I will be your lookouts, Ella Shard and probably Cora. It depends on what Cora would prefer to do, I guess. Go we'll find the kobolds, honestly, but you know, that's neither here nor <laughs> All right. <laughs> so are, are, the, are these plans shared with the rest of the group? Yeah, at this yes. point, Zoe will make a best effort being the one who's I think we've come dying. up with the plan, guys. We came up with the plan, everybody. Yeah, to huh? explain the plan, Intentionally, it will be like, Ella Shard's mentioned this, uh, Aurelia, we kind of need for this reason. Cora, do you have preferences? Um, honestly, wherever I am best utilized, I have no preference. I think it would be nice for Ella Shard to have backup just in case, but I don't want you to feel like we're throwing you out of and making you a target. No, that is fine. Cool. If I uh, while I I while I doubt it'll come to fighting at least on the outside unless things go drastically wrong on the inside, if it does, I'll I'll be between Korra and any physical attacks. So also these people are just performers and stagehands, but yeah, we should be fine. I will probably be able to yell really loudly and scare them off. There is a good chance that this will be. 12 seconds in and out. We're just trying to have our bases covered in case it goes wrong because it cooked. 
we just happened to get seated in the anti-warlock section of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and um, everyone around us suddenly stands up and reveals that symbol on their shirt. And somehow we found the machine guns. I don't know. I only just sold that attachment. Cole will say, but because of our advanced reconnaissance last uh, what if uh kind of looking at diamond what if they what if they hired guards this time <laughs> because what did you do that would have inclined them to hire guards just i mean that i mean they are they are professionals and we got are... backstage <laughs> they didn't, no. okay they didn't oh. want to be backstage okay, okay. Do you need but to be was... in disguise? Yeah. No, I already yes. was. Yes. I Diamond's already like, was. Cole's like, no. Diamond's like, yes. <laughs> so I Diamond, can help with that Diamond needs to be in disguise then. Okay. <laughs> I might have no said my full name. There. That's fine. We can yeah. we can work around that. It's just, it's good to know that that is a potential and issue. The goal is they won't see Diamond in the first place because Diamond's our teleporter. Yes. yes. Yeah. So Diamond and Aurelia shouldn't be seen this time. Yeah. But uh, we'll... Yeah. I'm pretty certain... 500 feet is a fair distance within complex. Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. You can find a business or a back alley a few blocks away. Make I that was... rendezvous point. Okay. Yeah. I was looking through my notes, um, trying to figure out which one of the possible and... cloaks this thing could be. What's happening? Weird. Oh, uh, hi, hey, oh. Aurelia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teleport um, you. With the plan you. is basically, Diamond and Cole think they know basically where the object is. You right. have ma eyes that can find magic. Yes. So you and Diamond will teleport into the room. You'll locate the item, and you guys will teleport right back out. Right. And meanwhile, you will Simple, do that. Clean. The rest of us are back up. Yeah, you do that after a distraction is caused. It shouldn't take. You should be able to be in and out before the distraction ends, because you have a minute. If mm, okay, and, all right. And if the distraction doesn't work, then I will. If the initial distraction doesn't work, I will make a much more compelling distraction. If a distraction. I don't know what distraction you are implying, or if this is giant going to be magic. an explosion. Okay. A giant, turning a diamond or something into a giant. Got it. Itself, uh, in the middle I'm, of the stage. I'm concerned if there has already been advanced reconnaissance that as soon as a distraction happens, they will fear that someone is trying to steal their most, probably their most precious possession. If... I hear a You're noise. That's I'm going funny. to grab my notes yeah. and my sister. Yeah, so here's my thought. So in that case, you'll know exactly where it is. Yeah, that's one half of it, is if they're grabbing it, that's a great chance for Cole and I, who are watching the door, to grab it. All right. If we err we should probably err on the side whatever we do of a non-hostile distraction of something that's more on the lines of it's dancers court someone's putting on a weird show maybe with the benefit of warlock powers then holy fuck we're all gonna die better grab my best gear because yeah. if you saw someone showing off a lightning rod you might go check it out Yes. All right. So in this time, right. you guys have gotten your short rests, done all the things that you, so you can do all that sort of thing that you need to. And mm -hmm. Wooten gets you to a dock in Dancer's Court. He's staying with the, he's staying with the Wavecrest. Cool. Just in case you guys need a quick getaway. <laughs> uh, we always need the quick getaway. He's Actually, keeping the engine running. Uh, is, is that within 500 feet from the stage, the wave crest? Oh, hell no. Mm. Oh, damn. I was about to be like, yeah, just bamf into the wave crest. Just like, okay, I'm ready but, to go now. <laughs> yeah, just in case I'm on the lookout for Diamond and Cole, maybe Cora and I run ahead, see if we can find an alleyway if for Diamonds. Okay. Diamond and Aurelia to set up in. First things first, though. 
Uh, as you guys get to Dancer's Court, I'll need everybody to make me an investigation check. Oh, no! Oh, boy! Oh, no! Oh, boy! It's so funny. The theater's it's already on fire because the anti-warlock people are attacking the lady with the cloak. Oh, well, that was <laughs> easy. Zoe, you, you get to the dock, you step off, and there's a handbill literally posted on a wall right next to you that says, uh, Bailey and Morgan latest performance and it lists a specific location it's a fight club called brew fighters okay okay so change right. of play so basically those at literal hour of game time we spent planning is useless cool <laughs> not entirely the mechanics of the plan are still very valid. You just don't have quite as much preset knowledge of knowing where to go right away. All right. So I'll, Zoe will pull that out, shoot it off airplane style of the Elishard. Catch. Open it. Elishard, give me a history check. <laughs> So now I'm back on the, if we don't know where it is, we need a different plan route, but- we You are familiar it. with Brew Fighters from the time that you spent- I was like, this has been mentioned before. I think my brother mentioned it actually. <laughs> he mentioned a couple fight clubs. This was, this was not one of the ones that he mentioned. This yeah. one is a slightly older establishment. It was more having its heyday when you were at the Academy Mark. So good news. Not only do I know this place, I think they still have my picture on the wall. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, depends on what you think. Uh, it depends on what you think about championship bouts. So, in the context of distraction, you could potentially provide a really unsuspicious distraction. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, this just made my ability to make a distraction ten times better and oh. easier and more subtle. So, All right. and Brew Fighters is one of those places where you do get, after a fashion, your picture on the wall. If you win their gauntlet, which is basically you go up, you go five rounds against individual fighters, you basically take your bloodied face, you go over to the wall, and you <laughs> roll it across. Yeah. And then they put a little frame around the stain. There's, All definitely, right. a, there's definitely a frame that has Elishard on the scene. Yep. Right. And there's <laughs> this there's this vaguely facial imprint. <laughs> okay. So. Elishard can find out what's what the performance is tonight, maybe even get himself set up to be just a distracting element. Or, I mean, I look like the kind of person who would wander in and ask about the night's events. Yeah. Elishard, you're also familiar with the fact that they frequently have kind of mid-bout entertainment. Yeah. Um, so where there'll be a few fights, there'll be some sort of performance, and then they'll have like the capstone I, fight for the night. Am I familiar? Can I remember? Can I recall the layout at to any uh, degree? Give me just a straight intelligence check. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I have probably not. a little bit. You're you're a little hazy on the details, but you kind of remember a rough layout. Can I? Could I get enough? Can I remember enough of a layout to be like, this is where the green room is for the fighters. This is where the storage yeah. room might be. Mm -hmm. this yeah. is, so to give mm -hmm. them at least an idea of where they might be setting up for their. So the performers storage. green room is probably not. Yeah. But, but like I can at least through process of elimination, get you a narrower area of probability. You yep. still want to teleport to beyond any locked doors. <clears throat> but, I have a very, Sorry, I just have a very important question to point out. It just has her name on the bill. No, it says Morgan and Bailey. Oh, Morgan and, sorry, I thought Morgan was the last name. Might be. Yeah. I was about to be like, just the one. No, okay. Yeah. Yep. And Bailey. Yep. Morgan, yeah. Bailey is her last name and Morgan is his first name. <laughs> Someone invisible oh, goes in. Someone invisible or tiny by being an animal or one of the familiars. I was saying, I just get some more just exact. Dump ways. the oozling into the fighting I just, ring. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, no, no. 
does a sneak mm-hmm. figures out where the exact room is because the crucial part of the plan is we can't we don't have time for a locked door uh, mm-hmm. Cora do you think Chithal would be able to recon yes so, <clears throat> Cora and I can go in the front Chithal can in recon out. while we while I set up and determine what best strategy to be a distraction would be all right Jack hey. question Yes. And this might be something that I could ask of the proprietors. How how does the does this particular fight club look upon the idea of a monster fight? Um they don't do monster fights. They don't no. Do You're fights? Okay. right. They they are specifically they for a fight club, they try and keep a level of reputation. Yeah. Monster fights are for the common rabble. Thank you very much. Okay. You know, we are a sophisticated purveyor of the performance and uh, martial arts. Thank you very much. You know, so yeah, it's it's always by contract and previous booking. These two people or this person going up against a team or something. You know, they've got variation to the matches, but it's always people fighting people more or less okay i have a couple of ideas then do you want we could call uh torvald and if you want someone to help rig a fight as a distraction i point at rorik that too (laughs) if like if if we need somebody rorik would you like to beat somebody's face in until you get to roll your own bloody face against a wall all right. <laughs> we have about my speed. We have someone here that can do that. All right. I'm just saying Torvald's loud, so distracting. Torvald is loud. I can be loud. <laughs> <laughs> Probably can. not as loud as Roar. Ick. Ick when let's, he wants to be. But let's, he's also not subtle. Let, uh, he's also recognizable. Yes. He's one of the academies, right? Yes. And he's a noble of some mm-hmm. description. Mm-hmm. Let, I'll, I'll lead the way. He's a noble for a given value of noble. I, I'll, 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 I don't know which kind. I know. I no, know but it's, got it's a very accurate. I love it. I'll, I'll lead the way and I was like, let me get in there and talk to the management and see what's going on and see, if, see what I can figure out from there. Okay. While I'm right. doing that, you guys can do your initial scouting. and. All right. So you guys get to brew fighters um, and set up on your various <laughs> vectors of approach. Elishard, uh, you walk in almost immediately. Somebody recognizes I the, you. I have the mask off and oh, on you, my belt. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they wouldn't recognize um, me with the mask on. <laughs> right. Yeah. They'd just be like, okay, somebody's, somebody's really into their cosplay. All yeah. right. Um <laughs> <laughs> Nice mask, Edge Lord. <laughs> right, uh, but you uh, you find that they do have a a full docket of of fighters already scheduled for this evening. Uh, it's three fights, uh, performance by Bailey and Morgan, and then <clears throat> the capstone fight of the evening. Two fighters that you've heard their names bandied about a bit. Yep. Uh, they're they're not. It's, this this is an amateur hour by any stretch. So talking to. Uh talking to the owner um or whoever i can talk to that's like I, i'm assuming i can talk to the booker at uh, at some point yeah this is this guy's basically the booker yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh so how would you feel about making a little bit extra money with an exhibition match after the fi- after the keystone bout we might be able to manage something i mean what are, what are we what are you talking so um before I, but, but uh, Elish, does Elishard know or have any idea what this person's disposition towards warlocks is? None at all. Okay, no idea. Mm-mm. So two questions: one, how do you feel about warlocks, and two, how do you feel about Durgar? Durgar, I got no problem with <laughs> warlocks. I mean, if you can get a warlock to fight as a warlock under the current climate in this city i mean the balls on that guy hmm? yeah so what if you had a exhibition match between your champion and either a duragar barbarian or a warlock who's willing to go the, who's willing to go the rounds publicly in the match 
Make a persuasion check. Any sort of advantage? Uh, no. Okay. Mm -mm. That's fine. I've got a plus five to my persuasion. 17. <laughs> 17. I mean, we could mark it either, pretty much. I'd have to talk with our, our headliner and see if they if both of them would be would be down for it but uh check and see which one they check and see which one they'd prefer <laughs> right, i'm not there i'm not there oh my god I'm... all right uh, yeah hang on a few minutes we'll we'll start to get things settled out mm -hmm. and he stumps off to go talk to some talent apparently Koroshana. yo You've been giving scouting duty. Yep. <laughs> I assume you just have Shathal go invisible and start scuttling go around. Go invisible and start look, start investigating. Yep. All right. Uh, start reconnaissing. Yeah, reconnoitering. There, I, that's the word. There it is. Like, there it is. I prefer <laughs> reconnaissing. I, I mean, yep. It, I prefer it's quote. <laughs> no. Um, yes. Touche. <laughs> go ahead and just roll me a d20 then to see how his scouting is going. Uh, just a d20? Yeah, because I don't think the closet has any um, persuasion or er, perception. Uh, I, you're probably right. Um,. Yep, and wisdom is a is a plus zero. So I will just make your wisdom. That's easier to do. Two. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Also, I will point out, I acknowledge reconnaissance is not a word, and that's the <laughs> difference between those two situations. But twelve is a word. <laughs> it is that's not. what we're talking about. It is a word. Anyway, objectively, um, it's not. So. <laughs> Shathal goes scuttling around. Shathal just decides to fuck off. <laughs> Shathal gets in a scare staring match with the alley cat. Uh, <laughs> and loses. The cat does not realize it's in a staring match because it can't see invisible. Um, <laughs> but it's still okay, wins somehow. So, so it's, we... it's too used to jinx. <laughs> uh... All right. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually you have to actually take point yeah. and start directing him. He spends Go. about 15 minutes just kind of making the rounds in the main room. And you can see there's benches set up. It's an arena. There's two entrances to it. Uh, that go through these pretty wide aisles that are sort of like half walled off from the mm -hmm. actual crowd, uh, and yeah, you can you can see the the wall of bloody faces, you know that sort of thing. Shithal got a little distracted by there. Um, go ahead and just make a perception check for yourself then, okay. using Shithal as as your vector. Uh, my perception is a whole two better. Hey. But my die rolling is better. Right. It's not. And, it's really not. Anyway, you can sp spend inspiration if you have any or want to. Uh, I don't think I do. Nope, I do not. Okay. Not. And that's On a 15. Oh, and uh, go ahead and roll a stealth for Shathal at advantage. It's a he has a plus five. Yep. Really? 12. 12 is honestly good enough in a busy room with a whole bunch of people who are not actively looking for small invisible demons. Fair. Um, it takes him a few tries, but he manages to scramble down into the entry lane and eventually duck through a door that is uh, provided as, as it's opened and then shut by one of the employees who's going, going about. He starts lurking around the back uh, did you guys provide descriptions of either Morgan or Bailey? Yeah, yes. we would have. Okay. Yeah. Um, after about 10 minutes, and the first bout at this point has begun, Elishard will get to your yeah. answer yeah. as it comes down. Um, after about 10 minutes, though, he manages to find a room where a male and a female human are apparently having a discussion in fairly quiet tones of some sort. Go ahead and give me one more perception check. Okay. Mm 
<laughs> they seem to. You recognize them as Eric matching. Eric has his headphones off. I just want to point out. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to have to repeat that because I you took rec- my headphones off. <laughs> you recognize them as Bailey and Morgan by description. They seem to be having a disagreement of some sort, but you can't hear what's being said. Get closer. <laughs> <laughs> Be another stealth check. <laughs> like, okay, have, huh, boss, I can't hear him. Get closer, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I can't see you. Give me another stealth. 21! 21! Hey! 21. Right. You're literally he invisible. slowly you creeps up. <laughs> Just in time to hear Morgan, the male. Gwyneth, I'm not happy with you always wearing it when we have various things at play here and consistency is, you know, our weak spot if we keep this up. She kind of brushes him off. I've decided and it's going to happen. We both know both parts. You'll be fine. I don't care. Fine. But if if this comes down around our ears, you're bringing me down with you. She just ignores that last comment and goes over. And you see her pull a sort of Harlequin-esque cloak out of a small chest. And then another one that looks identical to it. They both have kind of this patchwork composition uh, looking like they've almost been pieced together from various tapestries. There's little scenes of embroidered uh, settings or uh, characters and things like that that are all pieced together into this fairly long and encompassing. It's more of a cloak that is wrapped rather than one that is just worn and drapes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they both finish getting into costume. <clears throat> Elishard, I uh, as uh, the booker comes back to you, he says, so it's going to be down to the victor. Uh, one of them is willing to fight a warlock. The other one is not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you've got folks on the stand, I can offer you... 75 if the warlock goes in 40 if it's the durgar i've got both ready do you want to meet them or wait for the surprise i mean i need to meet them yeah yeah (laughs) i'll call rorik over rorik comes stumping up all right this is rorik he's our durgar he's he's my durgar you're not there (laughs) I'm not. <laughs> Pick and shield <laughs> looks like, yeah. He's a pretty handy fighter. All right. As, yeah. to the, as to the warlock, I pull out the mask and put it on my own face. <laughs> It'll be me. And I'm just going to, and I'm just going to pull out a knife and green flame blade, just flick the blade around a little bit and put it back. All right, done. Take the mask back off. Put it on the belt. Yeah, all right. Sure, sure. There are a few fights that happen, and then <clears throat> the mid uh, mid mid session performance comes out. Lights are sort of dimmed behind shuttered lanterns a bit, and then in the arena. Come, one coming down from each side, Morgan and Bailey both enter and the lights come back up. They go through a dynamic, energetic performance um, and it's it's a very sort of almost Beijing opera type imposed martial arts of a more artistic than practical uh, fashion. Uh, highly acrobatic um, and specifically the bit that you guys are watching for. At one point, 
sort of close to the finale, Morgan goes in for what looks like would be the theatrical equivalent of the death blow, slamming a fist with an outstretched blade that he had secreted somewhere around his person directly into uh, into to Gwyneth Bailey's chest. And just as the normally in theater, the blade would have connected and collapsed into the handle. This one doesn't because she just poof, into a cloud of smoke. Okay. <laughs> that answers that question. Drifts through him and then re-solidifies on the other side. Uh, I will explain. And there's and then immediately delivers her own death blow to her her opponent through whatever story it is they've been telling. He collapses and they take their bows. Uh, I will explain to the group as we recon as those of us that are going to be in the building at the moment reconvene during the show. Sort of that after the after the after the mid show fight, there's the final fight, and then I've worked in an exhibition match. Whoever is going to go out is going to depend on who wins. It's either going to be me or Rorik. And when we go out for when one of us goes out for that exhibition match, I'm going to put as a bonus stakes on the line a giant gem. And hopefully that will be enough of a awe gasping thing for the crowd that the people in the back will want to come see. I'm going to try to play it up as best I can. I've not done any acting in my life, but I have spun a tail or two. So, and remember, you can make a giant for one minute. Yeah, that's ten <laughs> rounds of so, combat. If yeah. Rorik can't beat a guy senseless <laughs> in ten you rounds, it out. <laughs> if Rorik can't beat a guy senseless in ten rounds, then why do we have him here? <laughs> that's fair. Because he's important All right. to me. Also, All Diamond right. does tell him, like, you be careful. Uh, I know you're a capable warrior and I know you can handle it. You're going to beat this guy up and it's going to be great and I'm very proud of you, but be careful. I've been watching. They're not, they're not fighting to the death or anything. No, but you know. That ain't. What, they might pull something on you. I don't, I don't know how these guys fight. Dirty, the way you're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get into a lot of back alley fights, Rorik. Do we need to? You'll teach. You're gonna teach me. We've already discussed this. As soon as we have, we're, doing, we're, we're doing this. It's gonna be. Great. Um, actually, uh, Diamond wanted to ask Aurelia when the when the uh, I I didn't want to disrupt the thing, but she would have mm. like like elbowed Aurelia. Like, can you can you see the magic of the cloak? Like when the performance was happening. Uh yeah, I would have then yeah I would have opened and tried to open the third eye or whatever and okay. tried to see. So right about now, Third eye opens on really and uh, Korishana, I assume, communicated the rough positioning yes. of the green yeah, room for sure. to, the, to the group. Yep. <clears throat> right about now, Morgan and Bailey, two pretty significant applause, are uh, returning to their, their location. Yeah, and backstage. so confirming which one has the cloak, what it is. Yeah, um, at... You can you can definitely tell if you've got your your Eldritch sight on. Yep. There, um, Aurelia can easily pick out that the the female Gwyneth Bailey is the one who's wearing the cloak. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and yep. it's it's some very strong kind of transmutation enchantment magic mm -hmm. that you're yep. that you're seeing bleed off that. Uh, Elishard, high or low? Hmm. Uh, hi. Okay. So they go back and the door shuts behind them. There's a little bit of announcement and patter and the two main headliners come out. Uh, one of them has a, 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 a long sword and a dagger in the offhand fighting Florentine. The other uh, is a female with a great sword. She's got kind of palish hair. It's pretty lady. Cole, you recognize her. Yeah, I, I was just gonna ask if I recognize her. On a rooftop a little Bring while the ago. Shit out of people. 
Oh shit! My hero. <laughs> fine, fine. We still. Have a she wouldn't to recognize her. you because the yeah. last time she saw you, you were a geriatric yeah. elf. Woman. She was a person yep. that was fighting the the warlock hunters. So mm -hmm. yeah. I ship it. But that's. And at this point, you get a name. This woman is apparently Aoife Twiceborn. And the battle begins. Now, are you guys making your play during this fight as they've gone back and presumably started, or are you waiting? Mm, Diamond's going to look at Zoe. Do we probably... Uh, the... They get undressed quickly, you said? Pretty, pretty quickly, yeah. I'd yeah, be afraid we should about do that. it while they're not packing up. Or, Jack, actually, this yeah. would change my answer. Was this a, they're here tonight, or they're here these three nights? This was a one-night performance, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do it before they start packing up. I don't know if they're going to necessarily wait till the end of the show. They're going to see us when we're back there then. Yeah, no, that's that's the problem. Um, shit, we wait until Elishard's distraction and I'll turn you to invisible. That means that you're gonna need to remain holding hands because otherwise you won't be able to find each other and I can't, he won't know to take a spell off. And Diamond needs to teleport Aurelia out. All right. Yeah, so, so as... As the timer ticks down, they go round after round. The, the, the dual-wielding fighter is quick. He's hard to hit. But Aoife is apparently taking her time, keeping up a solid defense against multiple angles of attack as he just deals these blades in a blurring dervish. And then suddenly there are three quick strikes from her and he's bleeding from one leg and down with her point at his throat. And everybody's on their feet, roaring and shouting and cheering. And Elishard, you see the booker look over at you. <laughs> pointing at me or pointing at Rory? Pointing at you. All right, cool. Uh, heading over. Uh, before he heads over, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, hey, Elishard, she's a warlock. I'll say it quietly. Are you sure? Yeah, I saw her uh, on the rooftop during that whole getting ambushed by warlock hunters. Then she she threw a guy off a roof. Then this will I'm be even more distracting, hopefully. That was me, Nikki. <laughs> I put on the mask. It's fine. Diamond can have everyone as girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond has no idea who this. Well, no, uh, hold on. Join us for just... our join us for our next campaign. Everyone hashtag everyone is Polly. <laughs> I mean, I support Diamond... this plan. Diamond yeah. is enamored. Uh, um, I put on the mask and head over. She fl and she flips her uh, hair out of her face. She oh, kind of no. tends to wear it in a side braid, off to one side and. Uh, Normally, there would be some grandstanding posturing victory lap sort of thing. She just drops the point of her blade into the dirt of the arena and leans on it a little bit <laughs> and just watches the opposite entrance. And the crowd starts to murmur a bit, something, this is not usual, something else is happening. And the master of ceremonies jumps out with his little bullhorn and starts yelling about how we have a surprise engagement this evening. Those of you who thought you were going to only see our champion fight once, we have a treat for you. And he starts going off as Elishar begins to get into his position. And the booker gives you a slap on the ass to get you moving down the, the entryway. Yep. How does Elishar do an entrance to a fight club? Hmm? Uh... 
<laughs> so I'm coming down with the mask on, hair hanging down, so it like sort of partially obscures. And the intention is to, <clears throat> I don't know how well it's going to work, but the intention is to, because this is going to be branded as a Warlock v. Champion fight, mm -hmm. uh, I am trying to be as, as intimidating as possible by just walking in very calmly and twirling a dagger that is lit with flames in one hand. Okay. And I'm just just sort of radiating that aura of menace that I I'm that magic hopefully, and creepy and weird. That hopefully this mask will help me with. <laughs> oh no. Okay. I don't have I unfortunately I don't have any spells that would let me do like smoke machine shit, but if right. I could, that would be a thing I'd be doing. All right. Diamond starts a polycule. The bell hits, and everybody to... is on their feet, on the edge of their benches. People are up against the the sort of wire guards for, between for, them and the arena. For Jeremy's for Jeremy's uh, inclination, it's an Undertaker walk. So, <laughs> imagine the bell in the background. Ding. Right. Actually, does Toll the Dead make a sound? It makes yes. a yes, very it loud does. bell noise. I, not targeting anything. I'm just going to cast Toll the Dead when I enter. So okay. it's just this loud bong. I'm going right. to spill my spell slot for aesthetic. Oh, that's, that's a, a spell slot. That's, that's a cantrip. That's a cantrip. Mm. Oh, that's right. I got that that's one. Right. You, you get yeah. creepy ass bell noises whenever you want them. So I'm just going to like. Right. A, a, yeah. a oh, rhythmic, it's throw me some initiative off, there. Because that's distracting as fuck. A rhythmic, that is distracting. A rhythmic tolling of the bell. Do I get an intimidation check? Uh, on your turn. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Can can we take the bell? You got a seventeen. Like, a, like a, I got oh, a six. Okay. Okay. The bell so toll should definitely be, be a cue, though. Boom. Yeah. 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 He will be going first. Oh yeah. All right. So <clears throat> she comes up, charging in on you, and. Let's see, she's got... Let me see how many attacks per turn she gets. Because I almost forgot. <laughs> no, that's fine. Oh, <laughs> fighters. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, fighters, man. <laughs> Nikki's in love. Nikki's just like, I'm going to start right. <laughs> Meanwhile, okay. So everybody's attention is on the arena, obviously, right now. Mm -hmm. yep. Are you guys getting started? Yep. We're getting started. They're invisible. Okay. Hey, and... <laughs> Hey, we hold hands. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, uh, Zoe makes you two vanish. Yep. And you're holding hands. Yes. Who's doing what first? Mm -hmm. uh, does Diamond know yeah. where they yeah. are? We found like, it. What room? We found the room? Okay. Diamond dimensions door doors them to their <sighs> room. Okay. And I think because Make no 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 me... because because uh Zoe cast it on us, I don't lose invisibility because no. yep. is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh you are having to guesstimate via dead reckoning navigation to get me to this room. I need the individual making the dimension door to give me an intelligence roll, just straight. Mm. I'm so excited for you to end up in a wall. I'm I I'm gonna use a DM inspiration. Okay. <laughs> uh, sixteen. Sixteen. You hear the screams and shouts of the crowd around you suddenly vanish momentarily and then come back, but mu muffled now, much muffled, and you are standing in a room probably 15 feet by 15 feet as Bailey and Morgan are taking off their costumes. You don't see either of the cloaks currently. I will uh, do... Uh, Gracie, uh, 13 is the sight. So a 24 hits you and a 15 hits you. Well, the first one hits me and I use my reaction. Okay. So, so the first one hits you for 12 slashing. You haven't had a chance to use your reaction yet. I need you to make a strength save in your non-transformed form. Okay. Uh, 12 damage, you said? 
12 slashing damage. Yep. So seven temporary hit points left. I still have temporary hit points. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Strength save, you said? Strength save. Or strength save. <coughs> save. Okay. Mm. 16? The DC is 17. Uh, you are oh. tripped and fall prone onto your back with an additional four slashing damage. All right. I still have temporary hit points. That's okay, though, because yep. as I hit the ground, I right. explode <laughs> upwards in Nightwalker. You are oh still my... prone, however. Yeah, I'm still prone, but... Right. Showmanship. Showmanship yep. is, the, is the important. She will be making her next attack at advantage since she's five feet from you and you are prone. Mm-hmm. 21 hits you. That's exactly my AC. That's exactly weapon. what's yeah. next. You take another 15 slashing damage. All right. So minus three. That's 12 now. She has spent one of her maneuver dice. I'm bad at counting. I'm, I'm so bad sad at counting I can't watch Elisha get smacked around by this lady. All right. <laughs> Aurelia, what are you doing in the room? Um, uh, Eldritch Sight. Okay. See if I can find the cloak. Um, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. <laughs> all right. Um, and both of you should give me an advantage self stealth check as well. Okay, 19 on the perception. <laughs> um, I'll spend my inspiration on this. Okay. Because that, that's terrible. That is terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's, an, it's a D8. 1D8, yes. 15. 15, okay. And Diamond, give me a stealth at advantage as well. <laughs> oh! Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. So for those oh those of you who are watching and can't see, on advantage, Aurelia rolled an 11 and a 6 with a plus 3 stealth modifier. Diamond, with a minus 2 stealth modifier, rolled an 11 and a 6. <laughs> That's kind of fucking amazing. <laughs> That's beautiful. You're right. so and you're spending right now. you're spending you know. inspiration as well, Diamond. Yes, right. I am. So you guys are at a 15 and a 16 respectively. Okay. Um, Boy. Are really yep. looking around? Yeah. There is a faint glow of those same schools of magic that you saw mm -hmm. from a closed and locked chest in one corner of the room. Okay. Um Elishard, your turn, sir. Uh, so, uh, I I don't know if I get just a passive intimidation for my transformation. At least on the audience is who I'm trying to intimidate, not her. I don't think she's going to be intimidated. But, um, but that aside, uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to mark her for death. Now, bear in mind, mm -hmm. marked for death cannot be moved from a target unless you actually kill them. Yeah, no, I know. Them. I'm not intending to kill her. Unless you actually kill them or you finish a long rest. I'm not expecting to have to fight more no, people. No, no, no. I don't think that... It, says, well, it okay. does say unless you... Let me, yeah. let me, look, let me look at what I wrote there, because... You said... Okay. Uh, In order to end the effect or mark a different target, you must complete a long rest once your current target has been killed. If you oh. mark someone for death, you have to kill them. I misread that. Never mind. Oh. I'm not, I'm not marking yeah, her that's why then. I was mm -hmm. saying it could also suit Zoe. I'm not marking her right. for death, then. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> if you put a mark that. for death on it, you are saying I am going to kill I, I, this person I read that no matter as, fucking what. I read that as long rest <laughs> or once you kill them. This motherfucker's going to die. Right, yeah, no, no. <laughs> March for death is a all or nothing thing. Uh, I'm going to come up with, I'm going to stand up and uh, try to punch her. Okay. I have a decent Because I was like, well, damn, this is somebody's character sheet. I'm going to have to rip up eventually. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. You come up and swing, wow. and she literally just leans her head about two inches to the side, and you cut a couple strands of hair off. <laughs> Hey, I don't 20. think you're. Hey, I don't 20. think you're even necessarily going to have to. It wouldn't have to tear out the the, the character sheet regardless. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm rolling like shit. Because uh, that implies that she dies and not Ella Shard. <laughs> it's not to the death. Uh, tell strike following up with the thirteen probably She's right. comes you. around and she just drives the forearm plate of her armor into the tail and stops it. It's fine. I'm making her look good. That's the point of this. I'm, <laughs> I am, I am putting her over. As the as the monstrous warlock heel, right? You're you're the heel, right? Yeah. Now. Yep. You're the warlock heel. <laughs> All right. Uh, for Diamond and Aurelia, what's happening? 
Great, it's locked. I don't have lock picks. Um, we don't need lock picks to get it out of the room. Sorry, hold up. Nope, 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 nope. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the disembodied voice does not start talking out loud. The, is what dis- you're saying. Good. the disembodied voice does not start talking out loud. Don't make me wake up my baby. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are you doing? Diamond's going to tap Aurelia on her hand, like, uh, uh, just like mm-hmm. like a weight. Um, <laughs> Do I know what that means? You probably have no fucking <laughs> No, idea. I have no idea. And I also can't talk to you right now because you're invisible and my so, thing needs me to be able to yep. see you. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> this is why Zell volunteered. This is a bad idea. It's good. This is great. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Um, <laughs> Diamond cast sleep. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, hold on. I'm gonna. Have to think. How many? Uh, it's eleven. Uh, um, <clears throat> sleep might break it. Ooh. Just uh, as a warning. Yeah, but if they're asleep, it won't matter. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. No, sleep will definitely break the invisibility because. Yeah. You cast a spell, so invisibility stops. Um, no, 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 wait, no, because no, 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 no. we we had the other discussion of like the teleport didn't break it because no, I didn't I didn't cast attacks are separate. Um, ah, okay, if, got it. Yes, I am the one who's casting the spell, so my spell casting breaks it. But it depends on whether or not GM considers an oh, yeah, that's, effect that's, that could that's affect fair. your allies to be an attack. That's fair. Nope. Let me look at invisibility real quick. <clears throat> Yeah, the wording is mechanics. The wording is specific. Mm-hmm. Creature you touch becomes invisible until the spell ends. Anything, blah 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 blah. The spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. Okay, but you just made a ruling on that two minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. For the context. Yep. We're gonna keep it consistent for now. Mm-hmm. We're gonna say okay. that, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm, in this case, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look at that a little more closely now that I'm reading it. But yes, yeah, no, we're keeping it consistent for now. You are okay. still invisible. They both fall asleep. Just boom. Okay. That, and I'm like, that was my last spell slot. Uh, I can't okay. dimension this out of here. But Diamond, uh, <laughs> well, holding, holding onto a really a hand. Oh, pulls her over to the okay. chest, picks it up, and we go. We go. We um. Go. I'll, I'll try and grab the other end. <laughs> it's it's small enough to be held in two hands. Okay, yeah, that's good. It's like yeah. not it's smaller than a foot locker. Well, yeah. Start, I don't want to yeah, let go of like, Aurelia's hand. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes. You can yeah. you can finagle to where she's like got her hand hooked yeah. onto your bicep or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 We, got we don't it. have to like right. run. We just have to be very we have to be very careful and very quiet. And you know what? And diamond, out. I I used my second level. I already used it. I use sleep to knock them out. That's I okay. I still have my spells. Yeah. I still have my spells. Right. Let's go. Fine. All right. Uh, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast a uh, earth. Uh, merge with merge with stone. Whatever the pass without trace one is. Pass without that. trace is what you're trying to. Ca- okay, you're using yeah. your your racial ability for pass without trace. Okay. Yes. All right. So that happens. Just Meanwhile, while everyone's the- while everyone's distracted, you just quietly carry the chest out. <laughs> Nobody notices the floating chest. They're too busy watching the monster <laughs> the fight in the arena. <laughs> Yep. Um, you are now. You're in. Um, are you still we- holding your blade, uh, Ella Shard? No, it merges. Everything. Okay. Everything merges. Everything merges. All right. She's going for another trip attack. Then. I'm uh, much stronger now. <laughs> yep. God, she's great. She keeps rolling these twenty ones. <laughs> <laughs> she rolls a twenty one. You take 10 slashing damage and make another strength save. It flashbacks to Corbin and all his trip attacks. 23. 23. You are still standing, but you do take a total of 12 slashing damage from that attack. Oh, another two. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then her second attack is a 22. Continues to hit me with the with my AC, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is a fifteen mm-hmm. slashing damage. How you looking? Uh, I'm at 
36 hit points. Okay. She's going to action surge then. You can see her kind of eyeing you, not wanting to get this over with too quick. Yeah. And, <laughs> and desperately trying to figure out how close is this used to be a human, but is now definitely not. Hmm. Uh, and she'll make two more attacks. Okay. Uh, Miss one of them, please. She does miss the first one. Okay. Uh, she rolls a 12. Um, oh, and then an 11. Apparently her luck has changed. Two more coming in, and these you handily either sidestep or block without them making too much contact. Just had to ask, John. Yeah, just uh, block one with the hand and the other with the tail. Yep. Just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, which brings us back to you. All right. Bash, 25 to hit. That hits. Mm -hmm. uh, for 13 bludgeoning damage. Bam! Right across the face. The jaw twists to the side, and there's a little bit of blood in the hair now. And then tail strike, 21 to hit. That hits as well. <laughs> for nine slashing damage. Excellent. Okay. I can't, I can't get knocked out without having any offensive done. Right. Yeah. No, you got this. You got this. All right. So... The two of you are trying to get out of a green room. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Um, send a message to Zoe. We have the chest. Um, not enough spells left to d door out. Walking invisibly out. <laughs> uh, you get a response back because message. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, sending. <laughs> I'll grab. Yeah. Um. All right. Cole and I will back you up. Um, um, yeah, never mind. I already did the spell. I have a plan ish. Okay. Um, uh, message is a cantrip. You can cast it again if you need to. Um, no, it's not message, it's sending. Oh, you cast sending. Okay. Yes, sending is a spell. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. yes I it don't is. have Sent message. a message with sending. Okay. Yes. okay. Sorry, Sorry, I was oh. unclear about that. The spells okay. have confusing names. We've covered this many. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, so gesture to Cole. Um, heading towards wherever we're supposed to rendezvous now. Ah, oh, jeez. This is why it was supposed to be the people going in. We're gonna, yeah, fine, it's fine. Those, <laughs> those not panicking. Aaron is panicking. <laughs> All right, she makes. Ooh. Yeah, she 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 attacks Elishard again, and this one, she literally the blade comes in, and she just points places the tip at a joint in your carapace and then just leans in uh so that's a crit okay. um and <laughs> you take 20 points of slashing damage still up i have 16 hit points left yeah oh. and you see her kind of glare at where she thinks your eyes probably are there's a there's a like a skull imprint now so right yeah mm-hmm and there's just the quirk of an eyebrow of, I could have made that hurt worse. And then she pulls back and just comes in with a broad swing, uh, aiming for your knees again, uh, which is a 21. <laughs> Go ahead and make me a strength save again. I get hit no matter what form I'm in. <laughs> 17. 17, that is the DC. You manage to stay up and you only take 14 points of slashing damage. I'm still up. Yeah. And then she just steps back, taking a slightly more defensive posture at this point. <clears throat> um, okay, so you guys are walking. What are you? Uh, what are? What is the backup crew doing? <laughs> Heading to where we can help. Um, unless, no. Well, if I, I mentioned Dorian, we're all stuck back there. No, I have to mention yeah, her I'll too. Now and. Hopefully he can be a bird. No, I'll dimension the Doris to where they are. Because I, I have that spell too. <laughs> you must have that spell. Everybody I remember it. now. <laughs> All right. So, Cora, you are now the lone person 
standing in this crowd where used to be a knot of five of you. There is now just one we, of you. We did very intentionally go somewhere where no one would yeah, see. Them. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're just there. Everybody's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. You can still see what's happening in the arena. Yep. What's oh, Jinx is Jinx is with Rourke's Cora. there too. What's Rorik doing? <clears throat> Rorik's just oh no, Rorik is up in the front row, pounding his fist against the cage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having a fucking good time is what Rorik's yeah. doing for the first time since he's gotten to the surface. Good. Um, I'm glad we could provide so we his new favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> I live here now. <laughs> and uh, you guys, uh, Cole, go ahead and, since you're doing the dimension door, go ahead and give me an intelligence check as well. All right. But. 19. Okay. You bamf in to the room just in time to see the door sort of closing behind something you can't see. And there's two sleeping people. Hmm? Yeah. Heading out that door, following okay. as easily as possible. Everybody give me stealth checks. Uh, well, Diamond yeah. and Aurelia are at advantage for invisible and have a plus 10 because of pass without trace. The other two of you are just at standard. 29. Uh, Maybe they'll be able to hide the floating I know how to sneak, guys. <laughs> Cole trips over one of the sleeping bodies. <laughs> guys! No! No, Cole, Cole goes out the door and doesn't notice that his hand hits a champagne flute that's just sort of sitting on a tray that falls to the ground and spills Yeah, who doesn't that. immediately drink or eat the food that they get? Who right, exactly. Why would you leave it lying around? It that would be so dumb. <laughs> right. Elishard, your turn. Wasteful. Uh, I'm going to not go down without a fight. Even though I'm going to go down next round because... People don't miss me. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 hits. 14 bludgeoning. She's going to use a parry to knock that down to six bludgeoning. 14 with the tail strike. Mm, uh, she catches you right on the cross guard of the greatsword. Yep. That's my turn. All right. I get two. Sounds minutes. good. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so... How fast are Zoe and Cole moving right now? Well, I'm trying to catch up with them because I know that they were headed. You stumble into somebody you can't see. <laughs> There's just a... Oh, oh. What was that, Aaron? You've got the cloak? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, Cole and I can each grab one of you. Good. Holds out hand. Uh, Diamond takes Zoe's hand. Okay. An invisible hand grabs you. You are grabbed by the invisible hand of the market. All right. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I, Don't yeah, test hopefully. me. I will make econ jokes. Yeah. Let go of the other end of the of the chest because presumably they're taking that mm -hmm. and grab Cole's hand. Okay. Yeah. As I long as it's within carry weight, which a foot locker should. Yeah. No. Oh, you yeah. you guys are you guys are fine that carry way. Carry weight. Um. Yep. Teleporting to we set up a rendezvous that's outside of the club yes. itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. You yep. set up a rendezvous a little ways down. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will wait to make sure that the chest goes with them. <laughs> no, so, good plan. Like, good plan. Then, there's definitely the sound of something vanishing, and then you guys are there. Okay. All right. Dimension door. Me and Aurelia out as well. Okay. And then you guys are out. Once I see Cole, I'm dropping in. Well, I invisibility. Um, Actually, Dimension Door is not concentration, so now I'm right. dropping invisibility. Okay. Oh. Okay. In, in her excitement, I was just like, oh my god, we did it. Oh my god, we did it. And she's going to hug you, and then she's going to hug Cole. Hug and you she's back. Gonna hug Aurelia. She's going to hug all of you. She's like, holy shit. Okay, okay. No, don't yeah. celebrate. Yeah, let's get the chest As open. the camera swings back to yeah. the arena, 
where Ifa just spins the blade around and brings it edge first right at uh, Elishard's temple. And you see this coming in and you try and get out of the way, but you can tell already this one's going to hit and it's going to hit hard. And then she, you can, but you can tell she flips it to the flat blade right before contact. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sell this hit as best I can. Just okay. like, like launch myself into the wall when I like, as Because she crits again and you take yeah. another. I'm out. I only had two hit points left. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, you know how the easiest way to sell something is? What the easiest way to sell something is? <laughs> Let it actually happen. Let it happen and be hurt. <laughs> well, no. What I, I'm like, like, like overselling. I'm launching right. myself yeah. into you, the you, wall. You just as ride I lose that unconsciousness. into the, the, the wall and boom, down you go. Yeah. And everybody's just flipping their shit and freaking out. And yeah, uh, you see, uh, Cora, you sh see Rorik like forcing his way through the crowd and then just, you know, reaching over the wall and sort of grabbing whatever he can reach of Elishard, who I think is still transformed. You don't no, lose when, it. No, right? when, I, you... when I go unconscious, I revert. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. As 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 Elishard's form slowly re reverts to his humanoid appearance, just grabbing him by the shoulder, pulling him up against, and like lifting a limp hand in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Rorik's the best. All right. Rorik is exactly the friend we you bring to the Fight Club. My, my, <laughs> yeah. My objective mm. was completed. I sacrificed my body for the sake of the mission. <laughs> Heden would be <laughs> proud. <laughs> All right, so you guys have managed to acquire at least a container that contains the second of the Fey Antiquities. That was... <laughs> Everybody manages to get themselves extracted from the area because you guys came up with a pretty solid plan despite having to change venues at the very last minute. Nicely done, everybody. And get back to the wave crest. Wotan ferries all of you home. We're going to have a bit of a time skip here. You guys just know you've got some objectives in the future. And you may have some preparations and that sort of thing at play. But on the evening of the 9th, everybody having made as many preparations, which we can backtrack if we need to next week, goes to sleep knowing that you have a robbery to conduct on the following morning. Elishard, as you fall asleep, placing the mask to the side, you hear a little ripple in the back of your head. It comes. There's no other inclination or anything you guys fall asleep watches are had etc i take that first watch <laughs> and everybody who awakens the next morning which is odd because even those of you who had the third watch both of you fall asleep at some point on that watch i need everybody to make perception checks as you awaken the morning of this crime caper that needs to happen. Uh, that was not an advantage. 12. Natural 20. Aurelia, you're the first one up. And maybe because of your personal history, maybe because of your hyper awareness for this sort of thing, you wake up and your body feels weird. Mm. Heavier, bulkier somehow. You glance down where you expected to be your arm is fur and claws. You look at your other arm, also fur and claws. Your entire body has shifted. And as the rest of you wake up, you find this same thing has happened. Diamond, you sleep in and it takes you a while, but it's the roaring throughout the house that eventually rouses you from your slumber. 
And I hope all of you will join us next week for Everyone is Bears as I make these fuckers play Honey Heist. (laughs) (laughs) Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Good job.